an inevitable dream or a doomed battle. I am dreaming of the final battle, doomed from the start. Even terribly outnumbered, I'm on the verge of victory. It seems only a matter of time before the enemy opens their gates and surrenders to me. My remaining troops are eager to return home. I understand that desire. This war often felt like it would never end. Now that we can finally see the end of it, all are eager to see it through and head home. But the means don't always justify the ends. Enough. Request denied. But General, I honestly think pressing the attack at their fortress while we have the advantage is the best path to victory. Showing mercy towards our enemies only prolongs the risk to our own troops. I can't accept that. There are civilians in there. Their surrender is inevitable. We only have to wait. We would win an assault, true, but it would be a massacre. Hold positions. That is my order. Understood, sir. We will obey. In the past, I issued orders I knew would end in rape, pillage and slaughter. Somewhere along the way, I changed. Maybe it was after what happened to the village of Teladeli. It had another name. The Land of Betrayal. Doubly so after I was done with it. I don't want my victories to come at the kind of, that kind of cost anymore. I didn't, I didn't catch that, sir. What did you say? Nothing. Just thinking aloud. You have your orders, soldier. Aye, sir. This is the army. Orders have to be executed precisely. Any mistake can cause a major catastrophe. But I still worry that my soft-heartedness is putting my troops in danger. Report from one of the spies, sir. About half the people in the castle have died already, but they aren't staying dead. The people are killing themselves and some dark magic is raising them back up to fight. How ironic. While I wasted time trying to spare as many civilians as possible, they killed themselves. Now the corpses of those I tried to save are being used as a weapon against me. And everything changes, and we are defeated. But there is no one to blame me on the battlefield, because they are already dead. I want this dream to end, but I can't escape what's coming. I can only watch as the people who once fought beside me die in pain, one after another, again and again. I can't escape it, because this is not a dream. This is the reality. This is my fault. It was me who made the decision. If I had abandoned my sentiment, if I had only ordered the final attack anyway. Is someone there? My eyes are still closed. I can hear the sound of babbling brooks and feel the fresh air coming through the open window. The air smells like flower petals. Then there comes a voice, an exotic song. The sound of footsteps, washing, organising. All of the sounds so familiar, it all seems so familiar, but fuzzy. Like it's something that happened weeks or months ago. Arel, are you awake, Your Excellency? Did I have another nightmare? Stop! You can't get up yet! Lay back down! It's not ready yet, Your Excellency. You can't look yet. It's so messy in your room. Surprise! Look, I picked these wildflowers for you. They look plain, but they have always been our favourite. I thought you would enjoy them. They came from a meadow outside the village. I'll wait for you there. I hope you like them. I'm, I'm waiting for someone. I don't know if I'll find him in my dream, but I want to be just like him when I wake up. Finn? Where are you, Finn? Are you awake? Opening my eyes, I see a vague shadow. As it draws closer, it becomes clearer. I make out a pair of hands, arms, a slender neck, and a pale, beautiful face. 
unbound black hair, so soft looking I want to run my hands through it. You appear to be in a miserable dream. Don't try to get out of bed. You're running a fever. Lynn holds me down and begins tending me, unlike my dream. The room is silent. Did you hear someone singing? I think about it for a moment before recalling that there was someone singing in part of my dream. I nod my head. She lowers her head, but I can see her face turning red from ear to ear and all the way down her neck as well. The blush adds a liveliness to her fragile features. She is like a painting of a white rose with just a drop of red added to the mix. She is like a precious picture attracting me so strong, which I will never let go. I'd never seen her embarrassed before. I turn away to save her the embarrassment. It, sound, it sounded exotic to me. Was it a song from your homeland? It's a song from a vague memory. Someone taught it to me a long ago. He was resting his head on my legs. His humming was soft. He told me it was a song for lovers. We weren't like that, but he taught it to me anyway. I was singing it for you, Aurel. Something is wrong here, but what is it? I can't remember. The fever is making it hard to think. My head feels like it's filled with cotton. Listening to Lynn, trying to understand her words, only makes it hurt. She notices my reaction. Her face seems to be coming closer, but getting blurrier. I feel her lips touch mine, briefly. Do you like me? Is this another dream beyond my control? I can only nod my head. More than you like Finn. Hearing Finn's name is like having a bucket of cold water dumped on my head. That's different. I just... I don't know how to describe my relationship with Finn. She's like a daughter to me, even though we just met. I just wanted to help her. Will you help me as well in the future, Mr. Rice? Lynn usually calls me Arel. Mr. Rice sounds different, more formal. I will help you if I can. But what could a noble princess need from me? What if I asked you to take me away from here? I'm blindsided by her sudden request. I don't want to have a fa have I the word language in this is getting worse. I don't want to have to face him anymore, the Emperor. I'm safe for now, but sooner or later he'll use me as his toy, just like he uses Finn. My heart starts to race at her words. My throat gets dry. Finn? What do you know, Lynn? You said the Emperor? And Finn? dropped life. Anguish screams. Finn, who was so desperate she was willing to murder Erephus. A whispered rendezvous in the garden at night. Finn's personality. So broken one day, so full of life the next, offering her body so readily, expecting that it's what I want from her. Her fragile memory makes her the perfect victim, one who forgets the abuse. A chilling horror overtakes me as I put together the pieces and realize the full extent of Finn's suffering. I try to climb out of bed, but my headache makes it more difficult than it should be. Don't move. You can't do anything to help her in your condition. Finn. Mr. Rice. Where is she now, Lynn? You know, don't you? Answer me! She looks lost in the face of my anger. I don't know anything. 
She covers her ears with her hands, shuts her eyes tight and shakes her head back and forth in denial. And she bursts into tears. Can't I take her place? Am I not good enough in your eyes? Even if I told you where she is, what would you do about it? All you can do is vent your anger at people who don't deserve it. You don't know what you're trying to get yourself into, and you can't help. I've watched you, Arel. You've never dared to resist the Emperor. All you've ever done is put your head down, closed your eyes, and obeyed his will. When will you finally exercise your own will? My own will? Lin? Your Highness? My own will resulted in the Vita in Vaelstra, the slaughter of most of my troops, the return to chaos to the world. I exercised my will, but what did I get? Disaster and death. I learned my lesson. I am a soldier. I was born to obey orders. Stronger men than I were born to give them. Yes. If I just follow the orders I'm given, no one else will ever die from my mistakes again. But when I first entered the garden, I made a decision. My will from now on is to carry the burden of my sins without complaint and to stand by my principles. That means I'll have to act. There is a child in this garden whose heart and soul are being tormented. She asked for my help. I can't abandon her to her fate. Do you think I'm making the wrong decision, Lynn? To help others? I'm just one man. No troops to command. No fortune to leverage. I'm just a man of simple means. All I have are my two strong hands. But I want to help him however I can. Even if the only thing I can offer to her is a hand... I understand, Arel. Finn must be waiting for you. His Majesty has summoned her again. Forgive me for attempting to hold you back. I know how you can help me now. Tears run down her cheeks as she unties a sword and proffers it to me. In your hour of need, my sword, Frostflower, will protect you. I'm not strong enough to help Finn myself. Please take Frostflower and act in my stead. I will be here, awaiting your safe return. <laughs>